Human African trypanosomiasis, also known as sleeping sickness, is a disease caused by a group of parasites called Trypanosoma brucei. The two main types causing human disease are Trypanosoma brucei gambiense and rhodesiense. There are other types of Trypanosoma brucei which cause animal disease and very occasionally infect humans. Chagas disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis, is a different disease caused by Trypanosoma cruzi. Gambiense is the most common form of African trypanosomiasis, accounting for about 97% of all cases. It's found in countries in Central and West Africa and tends to cause the chronic form of disease. Rhodesiense accounts for about 3% of cases. It's found in countries in Eastern and Southern Africa and causes a more acute infection. Although there were about 300,000 estimated cases in 1995, intense control activities in affected countries have led to a dramatic decline in cases. In 2014, the number of cases was estimated to be about 15,000. Let's have a look at how the disease is transmitted. The parasite is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected tsetse fly. These flies are only found in sub-Saharan Africa, most commonly in rural areas. Both female and male flies can transmit the infection. These flies tend to bite during daylight hours. Flies can get infected when they bite a person or animal infected with the parasite. Domestic and wild animals can carry the parasite and are important reservoirs of infection, especially for Rhodesiense. Humans are the main reservoir for Gambiense. Very uncommonly, the infection can be transmitted from mother to baby or through blood transfusions, infected needles and syringes, or sexually. Let's have a look at how the disease presents. There are two main stages of the disease. In the first or early stage, the parasite is found outside the central nervous system, mainly in the blood, lymphatic system, or other organs such as the heart, liver, spleen, or eye. In the second or late stage, the parasite invades the central nervous system. Initially, there can be a painful sore, also called a canker, at the site of the tsetse fly bite. Symptoms of the first stage include fever, muscle and joint pain, headaches, itching, and enlarged lymph nodes. It can lead to disease in the affected organs, such as inflammation of the heart muscle, enlargement of the spleen and liver, and eye disease. In the second stage, there can be a range of neurological symptoms, such as changes in personality, psychiatric symptoms, weakness, or problems with movement. The disease can affect sleep. Patients tend to have nighttime sleep disturbances and are sleepy during the day. This can get progressively worse with patients sleeping most of the time. This is why the disease is called sleeping sickness. If left untreated, the disease can lead to death. The severity of the disease and how quickly the disease progresses from the first stage to the second stage depends on the type of parasite. In Rhodesiense infections, it's quite fast, usually a few weeks. On the other hand, in Gambiense infections, it may take several years. People who get infected may not have symptoms for months, if not years. When they do, they're usually in the second stage. The disease is diagnosed by laboratory techniques, usually by examining the blood under the microscope and looking for the parasite. This usually works well for Rhodesiense infections, but harder to do for Gambiense infections. The classic method of diagnosing Gambiense infections is by examining fluid from a lymph node under a microscope. Second stage infections can be diagnosed by examining cerebrospinal fluid. Blood tests that look for antibodies against the parasite can sometimes be used. There is a test called a card agglutination test that is used for screening for people with infections. This test only works for people with Gambiense infections. PCR tests that look for the genetic fingerprint of the parasite can also be used. There is a limited range of effective medication available to treat the disease. The type of medication used will depend on the type of parasite and the stage of the disease. The disease is harder to treat once it's progressed to the second stage. The medication used is more toxic and complicated to administer. So how do we prevent and control the disease? Let's have a look at individual measures and also measures that could be done at a community level. At an individual level, preventative measures focus on avoiding contact with the tsetse flies. These include 
wearing appropriate clothing that covers exposed parts of the body, avoiding bushes in areas that tsetse flies are known to live. Insect repellents are not that effective against these flies, but may prevent other insect bites that may cause other diseases. These measures may not always be possible to do for people living and working in these areas. There is no vaccine or preventative drugs that can be taken to stop people from getting the disease. Intense efforts to control the disease have been led by the World Health Organization, national sleeping sickness control programs, and others such as pharmaceutical companies and non-governmental organizations. They focus on two areas, reducing the number of people with disease and controlling tsetse flies. Reducing the number of people with disease needs good surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment that is effective, prompt, and accessible. Controlling tsetse flies is usually done by insecticide impregnated traps and application of insecticides to the resting sites of flies. Controlling the disease in animal reservoirs is generally hard to do. And that's a quick look at sleeping sickness, a neglected tropical disease that can have a significant impact on the health of individuals and entire communities. For more information, have a look at the websites below.